Hey everyone, welcome to Blender Tutor. I'm Tom, and today we're gonna to be going over how to create a disintegrating text effect in Blender 2.93. Okay, so here's the finished effect we're gonna be going for. Basically, we're gonna start with some 3D text, and we're just gonna be using modifiers to break it apart, and then we're gonna use a gradient texture to mask the effect of the disintegration, starting from the right and moving to the left over time. So here is what it looks like in the viewport. And as you can see, there are a lot of polygons in this scene, so it does move a little slowly. But here's what it looks like in the viewport preview. And it's a generally simple scene to put together, so let's get started with a new scene. Okay, so we could just go ahead and delete the light in the cube. We could hide the camera for now. Let's just go press one on the numpad pad to go into uh, front view and let's add in some text. So we could rotate that on the X, just hit R, X, and 90. We can go down to the text uh, data field over here. I'm gonna change the alignment to center. And I'm gonna change the, under font, I'm just gonna choose a font that I like. And I would say a chunkier font will probably work a little better for this. And then for the size, I'm gonna bring that up to three. And then what we'll do is go under geometry and let's give this a little depth. So on the extrude, I'm gonna bring that up to 0.3. That should be good. And that's about all you need to do. Uh, make Before you do anything else, make sure this is the text that you're gonna to want to disintegrate because we're gonna to have to create convert this to a mesh and it won't be editable after that. So what we can do is duplicate our text and then press M to move it to a new collection. Let's create a new collection called Text Backup. Okay, and then I'm just gonna turn that collection off. Now we could right click on this and convert to mesh. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the modifier panel and let's apply a remesh modifier. I'm gonna change this to smooth, uh, uncheck remove disconnected. And then you're gonna have to bring this up to at least eight or nine. Let's try eight. Eight actually doesn't look too bad, but you can see it's a little chunky. Bring that up to bring that up to nine, and it gets a little smoother. I think my final render was all the way up to ten. And it, it's gonna get even smoother. You can turn on smooth shading, but this is already over one million tries half a million uh, faces. So you can see that is a very dense geometry. And if your machine's slowing down or you think it looks okay at a lower level, I would recommend doing that. We'll stick with a nine for now. And this is always uh, adjustable. So if you want for now, just to speed things up in your viewport, you can keep it at a lower setting. And then for the final render, you could crank that up to a higher setting. Next, let's add a particle system. So the number of particles you have are going to affect how many pieces this disintegrates into. So the higher, the better. I'm gonna do something like 10,000 for this. I think in my final render, I did about 25,000. And then for the frame start and end, let's bring those back, or let's bring those both down to zero. And you might be wondering why you can't see any particles right now. There's actually one right here, and that's actually all of them are overlapped right on this point. So what we're going to need to do is under source, let's change that to use modifier stack. Now you can see all of our particles. They all um, start on frame zero, so they're already all applied. But if we uh, play, you can see they all just kind of fall. So we're gonna do a few more things. For one, change the lifetime to however long you want your animation to be. I'll do 120 frames for this. Under velocity, let's change that to zero so they don't like push out away from the geometry. Uh, turn on rotation and turn on dynamic. And what that will do is let our particles and our pieces of our text that's falling apart, it'll be affected by our force field that we apply later in this tutorial. 
and they'll actually be able to rotate. When you don't turn this on, they just kind of stay static. Even though they're moving, it looks a little weird. Under field weights right here, let's change gravity to zero. And that way, now when we play uh, on our timeline, they're not falling anymore, and that is what we want. We only want them to be affected by the force field we're gonna apply. Under render, we can change this to none because we don't actually need to see the particles, we just need them to, we need the data from them. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a texture, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do though, is we'll go back to the modifier panel and we'll add a explode modifier. And you can click on cut edges. And this will basically cut our mesh into all of the pieces that are going to fly apart. But if we press play right now, you're still seeing nothing is happening. And that is because there's no physics affecting our uh, particles right now. So nothing is moving. So we're going to bring in a force field turbulence. And with the turbulence force field uh, selected, let's go to the physics tab over here and we're going to change the strength a bit higher. Let's bring that up to 25 for now. For size, we just do one. I'd say anywhere between one and two should be good. And then under flow, I brought mine up to three. These are all settings you might need to adjust, adjust depending on the scale of your scene. But these should work okay. And now you can already see that the text is kind of being pulled apart because the turbulence um, force field starts at frame zero. So even on frame one, it's already kind of moved apart. And you can see our text is now just flying apart which is good, but we don't want that all to happen on frame one. So that's where that texture is gonna come in. But before we do that, let's bring in a empty. I like the arrows empty, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go into front view, and I'm just gonna move this over on the X until it's past the last letter in our text. And on frame one, I will add a location keyframe. And then let's bring this forward like 60 frames and let's just move this over so it's on the other side of our text and we can add another location keyframe. Now let's select our text object again and go to the particle system. We'll go to that texture that we created earlier. You can click on this little tab and it'll bring us to the texture field down here. And what we're gonna do now is change this to a blend type uh, texture, which is basically a gradient. Linear, we could change that to easing and that'll just be a little bit smoother of a transition. Orientation for us, since we're moving from right to left, uh, horizontal is good, but you could also do vertical. And then under influence, let's do that drop down right there. And these are all the different things we can affect with our texture. Uh, let's turn off general time and go down to force fields. And basically what we want this texture to be masking is the influence of that force field. So with it all the way on the right, since this gradient is basically going to be applied to our empty, it will start all the way over in black and slowly move over until the gradient is covering the entire text object with white, which will, that's the maximum amount of influence that the turbulence effector will be able to give on the text. So the last thing we need to do is change the mapping type from generated to object. And then we will choose our empty object. I would recommend saving your project so it doesn't crash while you're trying to play through this. But now if we try to play, you can see that it is slowly affecting our text over time as we play through but this is very slow in the viewport. So what we can do is with our text selected, go to the particle system. So let's go to cache. And the last thing we should do before we bake is change the length of your timeline to however long your lifetime is for your particles. So I'll bring that to 120. And now I will bake all dynamics and I'll be right back.
Also, just as a reminder, you can get all of my project files for my tutorials on my Patreon at patreon.com slash blendertutor. All right, back to the tutorial. Cool, so now that that's baked, let's check out our animation. And you can see that is working just fine. I'm gonna bring my camera uh, to the front view and I'll just center that to zero on the X. Maybe I'll bring that up a little on the Z. And I might even bring it back a little further on the Y. And yeah, that is working out just fine. Now, one last part for this tutorial. If you would like the particles to slowly dissolve or disintegrate completely off screen after the text falls apart, that is a simple thing we could do in the material shader. So let's go ahead and go into front view one more time. And let's add another empty. And I will bring that over again all the way to the right of the text. And I'll just call this material empty. And I'll do the same thing, but I'll move uh, 30 frames forward. I'll add a location keyframe. So the first location keyframe will be on frame 30. And then we'll move forward to frame 90. So it's basically the front and end of this animation will be 30 frames after the initial empty. And I will move that over on the X. I'm just holding down control to snap along increments. I'll, head, I'll add another location keyframe. So now that one is moving just like the other one, just offset a little bit. Now we can go to the shading tab. And what I will do is I'll bring in a transparent shader and a mixed shader. And we're gonna create a mask with another gradient texture. So you can just hit Control T to set up all of these nodes, but you could detach it from our principled BSDF. And then we'll just change this image texture. If you hit Shift S, you can change that to a different type of node. I'm gonna change it to a gradient node, or gradient texture, I mean. And we'll do basically what we did earlier, where we will change this to an object mapping and we'll choose our material empty as the object. For this, we can change that to easing and then we can bring in a color ramp, connect that to that. And now let's bring in a timeline down here and you can see as that material empty starts moving over, you can see that gradient right there. And I'm going to bring this into as an ease as well. But I'm going to actually bring down the scale of the gradient in the mapping node. I'll bring that down to like 0.15. And you can see the gradient is now a, a lot more of a transition. And if I bring that color ramp and plug that into the fact value of our mix shader. And then we have to go uh, and turn on under settings in the material node in Eevee. Let's change the blend mode to alpha blend. And now if we move further over, you could see they're slowly starting to get um, converted from our principal BSDF shader to a transparent shader. And so that'll just slowly fade over time. Now you could see since I lowered the scale of that um, gradient, that this node isn't actually moved over enough. So if we select in the outliner our material empty, we're gonna have to move that over until it dissolves all of our um, text. And then just hit I, add a new location keyframe. And now we can grab our old location keyframe, delete it, 
and we can just slide that over to 90. And now you can see our text is fading over time as we scrub through that. And there you go. So yeah, that is the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this technique and you're interested in other things you could do with it, I have a similar tutorial on how to combine this technique with a cloth sim. So you could have this effect on screen where the outer layer of an object is kind of falling apart and kind of floating up into the air. You can make some really cool stuff with that. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.